Mafia Definitive Edition is something we also saw coming when Mafia 3 and Mafia 2 both got Definitive Edition releases and given now that it's 2020 and just shortly after the Mafia 3 Definitive Edition release, a few questions do come to mind when we see that release Mafia Definitive Edition. First and foremost, what did they change? Is it as good as I remember it? And is it worth the money? So today let's discuss Hangar 13's Mafia Definitive Edition and we'll see what the good, the bad and the changes actually were. Now right off the bat as usual we've done this on the 7700K and the GTX 1080 with 32 gigabytes of RAM and I will say say that this game did run better than Mafia 3 which I'm currently streaming right now so that was kind of fun especially streaming this game it just ran better and felt smoother capped at 60 FPS. Now like I said this game did run like a dream but I did run in one slight issue when I wasn't playing the game is that it took me about half an hour to actually get it launched um, and kept freezing and black screening on the launch. Eventually after about half an hour and a couple of all F4s everything was running smooth. I did have to cap the game at 60 like I said but that was to avoid streaming issues if I tried to stream it at over 60 FPS using the two computer setup it kind of lagged on my end and that lag kind of carried over to the stream but apart from that it did run quite smooth. I also had some issues running it in 4K, but that was my fault. I didn't realise I had to take the 4K monitor and make it my main display. I just thought I could use it as like a standard extended display. Drag it over, hit Alt Enter, go into settings and select 4K. That is my fault. Now when I hadn't made such a big mess, I was streaming the game for about an hour beforehand and it was being quite choppy, but I was getting over at 80 FPS. Once I changed everything down to the medium preset and such and unlocked the frame rate, the game still looked gorgeous at medium. I was also able to stream it really well as well. But we're going to move on to some benchmarks now, and I benchmarked this game at the high preset, and I used a level that I thought was quite intensive. So we'll go over those details, and we'll talk about it there. Now the benchmark that I ran was on the level called Great Deal, and I picked this level because it's got an awful lot of open world driving, there's then a shootout in a sort of enclosed environment that then turns to chaos, where there's an explosion, some fires, you turn on a sprinkler system before going back into the streets for high speed chases, shooting out cars, and basically destroying like a little shanty town bit. It kind of encapsulated damn near everything you'll do in the game at any given time, so I thought this is a good benchmark. Now here are the benchmark results and we're going to go over these, we have orange as 4k and blue as 1080p. So first of all 1080p, the average was 84.5, minimum was 55.3 and the maximum was 114.6. This is a huge difference when we go to 4k with averages of 28.2, minimums of 18.6 and a maximum of 30.1. I want to take a quick sidebar before we go into the differences and we'll talk about torture. Playing this level in 1080p was very easy, it was very nice. Playing it at 4K was very hard, the frame rate being quite low, yes, however given that the 4K screen was all the way to my left, my body was basically doing a 90 degree turn at the waist. It was not fun. It was nice, but not fun. The game looked beautiful, but it was painful. Now, let's look at the comparisons. On average you only got 33.37% of the overall performance you got at 1080p, the minimum was about 33.63%, the maximum was 26.26%. The 1% and 0.1% lows I'm not really going to bother with, that's just part of the benchmark part. Personally I think that's just sort of transitioning scenes between cutscenes and between gameplay. Though the cutscenes are kind of rendered in engine, they're not separate things. So if your game's running at 10 FPS, the cutscenes are running at 10 FPS, and if your game's running at 100 FPS, the cutscenes are running at 100 FPS, so the cutscenes were actually involved in this benchmark as soon as I noticed that. So what can we say by these numbers? It's safe to say that on high I lost about 60% of my performance overall. The game did look stunning though and I cannot tell you how much nicer it looked, but it was also much harder as a result and this was on the easiest difficulty just with this benchmark. Though the game was technically playable with a few dips here and there and certain things were happening, the overall game was really good and still technically playable. I would just recommend maybe tweaking those graphics settings slightly if you are playing in a similar setup at 4K. That being said, the mission didn't really come to be much harder, uh, it was just a lot more frustrating with lower frame rate and things being a little less smooth. Now, if we look at the images I'm showing here, the temperatures were quite nice. Uh, I have been having some GPU issues recently, I've had to repaste it, so as a result, it does look a little high, your mileage may vary on that one. CPU though, they are both roughly the same. I've played games that get this GPU up to high 90s, and those are games that require RTX cards, so this is doing quite good there. I do have a very aggressive fan curve those you can see it's a drop off I didn't put that in there but essentially the fans ran at 100% throughout most of this and as soon as the game stopped 
Whoom, right down. Anyway, this game tells a story and maybe we should talk about it. So for everybody who was conceived around 2000, let's talk about the story of Mafia. So, the story of Mafia is similar, but not exactly the same as the PS2 original. It does say that the game is based off of an original game. Anger 13 have taken some little liberties here and there with certain things, but it has helped make the game less awkward. Looking at you, PS2 cutscene, looking at you. So the game takes place in 1939. You're Tommy Angelo, and the game starts as you're sitting in a diner looking a bit awry and uncouth, which is, you know, uncommon for a member of the Mafia. A man sits down opposite you, and you start spilling your entire life story of the past nine years to a cop. Now you know you're in for a ride when a Mafia game starts with the main protagonist turning rap. Now we learn in his younger years that Tommy was a taxi driver and one night whilst on his break, two members of the Mafia come running down the street after a chase, hold Tommy hostage and tell him to get in the car and just book it. After dropping them off at their headquarters, one of them reaches into his pocket after coming out of the bar and Tommy, given all the talk of having his windows tinted red, panics and tries to drive away. Turns out the Don just wishes to compensate him generously for getting his two boys out of there. The next day, after a really boring drive round taking people up and dropping them off, two members of the mob that Tommy escaped from the other night jump him and decide to do their best chef impression by tenderising his taxi with a baseball bat. Atop this, ribs are also on the chopping block, so therefore Tommy does his best roadrunner impression and gets the fuck out of there back to the bar he went to the previous night. The men he assisted take him in to see the Don, who gives him the opportunity to open up a barbecue selling Molotov cocktails and burnt out cars. In short, revenge. In terms of the road a taxi driver can take, this one's a slippery one. Tommy does start off as a wheelman and helps the guys around, however he does start doing a lot more deplorable activities from planting car bombs to axing off rival Mafia member families, stealing from the FBI and robbing a bank. That being said, most of the time he is just a wheelman rather than a gunman and you spend most of this game, if not 90% of it, just driving from A to B. Now the story has a slow burner granted, with some nice action pieces sprawled between it just to help liven it up. It does help make Tommy more sympathetic as a whole as well. Best example of this in the mission, Bon Appetit. In the PS2 version, Tommy and the Don walk in and talk about the food and how Tommy should take his wife there. Fantastic meal, Peppy. I haven't eaten that well in a long time. Molto grazie, Don. Praise it from a gourmet like you always it makes me feel it with joy. Oh, please, I'm no gourmet. If you knew what I ate for dinner yesterday, you definitely wouldn't say that. <laughs> Can I get you anything else, Adana? I have an excellent Chianti. Really? Let's get it out here then, Peppy. At once, sir. How'd you like it, Tommy? It was fantastic, boss. I'll have to bring Sarah here sometime. Ah, yes. You certainly should, Tommy. Just be careful that Sarah doesn't take offense. She cooks worse than Peppy. <laughs> Contrast that with the remake, where Tommy turns down the wine that's offered to him and says that his wife threatened to leave him if he didn't stop drinking. To this, the Don tells Tommy that he actually told Tommy's wife to get him off the drink so that Tommy didn't make any mistakes that he couldn't live with. Aqui, Auntie. I've been saving this just for you. Yeah, bene, bene, bene. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy, huh? I'm glad you're off the rough, Tommy. Uh, Sarah threatened to leave me if I didn't dry out. I know. She told you? No. I put her up to it. Drunkards get sloppy, Tom. I didn't want you to make a mistake we couldn't live with. This is one of the few little changes that do give us reason to root for Tommy wanting out of the mob life. This more sympathetic and almost tragic side to Tommy can also be seen in the mission You Lucky Bastard. In both instances, you're tasked with planting a car bomb in the personal vehicle of a rival Don's right-hand man. Both times, Tommy hangs around to witness the incident, and this is where it kind of parallels and forks off. In the original, you were waiting by the side, just having a cigarette when the man's wife gets in the end of the car. Then Tommy just shouts, no, don't, and makes very little effort to actually stop her from getting in the car. In contrast to this, in the definitive edition, Tommy's on the phone with his wife, and as soon as he sees this girl getting into the car, he drops the phone and starts screaming, don't. He makes it all the way to the other end of the road, and then she starts the engine, and the car blows up. Tommy then runs away, saying, no, 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 and you can hear it in his voice that he is absolutely petrified of what he's just done. Editing me here. Don't know if you noticed. Tommy's a bit of an asshole in the PS2. That's one hot dame. Wet.
Now I don't want to give too much away to all you people thinking about buying the game and I also don't want to spoil some of the changes to the people who have played the original and are thinking about picking up this new game. So we'll leave it there just now and we'll go ahead and discuss the gameplay instead. The gameplay of Mafia back in 2002 was quite clunky and awkward, if you've ever actually played it you'll know what I'm talking about. Just as an example, taking cover was essentially crouching behind a wall, peeking out, taking a few pot shots that were completely inaccurate with a Tommy Gunner pistol. As well as that, you were essentially made of glass in the original game so sustained fire fights were just best avoided at all costs. As well as that with sporadic checkpoint system and such, you could be midway through a level and have not encountered a checkpoint, been there for half an hour, die and you're right back to the beginning of the level. So they added some more checkpoints which was nice, but there's a few other things they have added as well. In addition to the new checkpoints there's also a cover system like in Mafia 2 and Mafia 3, so this is practically a full overhaul of the combat system essentially, even though barely anything's changed, the fact that there's a cover system and such it makes it a little easier. So you can actually get into a sustained gunfight and you have a much higher chance of actually getting out of it. So it's all tweakable in every way when it comes to the actual difficulty of the game as well. You get how aggressive the cops are, how aggressive enemies are, you can also change the fucking car handling. Cars can go from being extremely unique in every way, shape and form and some cars being un un unhandleable, all the way down to every car handling exactly the same. Apart from the fucking motorbike. Now with that degree of realism in it, there is still some realism kept there to an extent when you're playing in lower difficulties. For example, a 12 gauge shotgun, you ain't surviving both barrels to the chest regardless of the difficulty, you're going down. You you just don't survive that. Of course, other weapons as well have had some tweaks, so just to go through them, the Tommy guns are best shot in burst fire because at sustained fire, they are extremely inaccurate. The revolvers, they've had a higher kick to them, but they do reload faster, meaning if you find yourself with a six shot, just aim for the head whilst in cover and you can take out six people and do a quick reload and jump straight back into it. Shotguns, however, they are absolutely amazing at anything under two foot. Quite literally, if this guy is two foot one inch in front of you, you might as well just be screaming swear words at him, because that's going to do more damage than the shotgun. It is pitiful at range. The best gun that you can use, in my opinion, would be just the standard 1911 pistol. It's great at range, it's great close up, it resets extremely easily, and you find bullets for it more commonly than you find bullets for anything else. The bullets for this gun can be found in abundance, so regardless of the firefight you're in, as long as you've got that, you're always guaranteed to have bullets. Now what's a semi-open world game without its cars, and what's the cars without the driving? So let's talk about that. First of all, you've got two types of driving, like in the previous games. You can go for simulation driving where every car is going to handle differently and have specific feels to it so it's going to be a little harder to do certain missions in some cars you may not have a good feel for. Alternatively you can go for classic and classic just makes every car roughly the same so all the missions are a little easier if you know all the cars. Now as well as that there has been a little overhaul on how cars actually feel as a whole. Acceleration and top speed have been adjusted so now these rectangles and wheels actually do feel faster than the original. 80 miles an hour actually feels pretty fucking fast because it is. Car combat's also seen an improvement. Now you can actually kind of hang out the window and pop shots off as well as that you can get an indicator as to where your shots are landing and a little sort of hit marker for when you actually get a kill or a hit. So that way you actually know that the target's gone. A lot of tweaks to the difficulty and newer elements in the game have also made it a little bit more accessible for anyone who's interested in the Mafia trilogy but hasn't played the first one or downright refuses to play the Dark Souls of 2002. Now we need to talk about some of the bigger changes to this game. Um, this is an example, a few things have been taken out, a few things have been put in in its place to make it a whole new experience so new players and old players can kind of get something new. Some scenes have been outright extended and others just straight removed. A notable sex scene that was just absolutely awkward. Well, that's been removed and it gives us a little bit more insight into the care inside of Tommy. And it's not that he's looking for another notch in the bedpost this time but actually makes it look like he's looking for a more meaningful connection in regards to things which helps build that sympathetic you know protagonist we spoke about earlier on that being said that same cutscene does cut off at just the right point where it can be implied it was really left to the imagination there but they've tried about to spoil the end of the game here so if you do not want to know that just go to the timestamp here Anyway, as a testament to how far story driven games have come, one of the best scenes does come from the end of this game where we do we do see a fully voiced and acted veto from Mafia 2 and 3. Alterations to this scene also give the idea of a happy life and a happy ending after everything that happened. We do get to see Tommy going through like the motions of him being in jail rather than him just writing his memoirs. You get to see him angry, frustrated, knocking fuck out a wall, notching it on the wall the days or years he's been in there. But in comparison to the ending of the 2002 game to this game, in the 2002 game he just gets shot and dies a 
going on his lawn buzz watering. In this version, his family hear the shot and they come running out and he lies there dying with all of them around them and he's happy. It has a huge tonal change, but it is something different for the people who actually played the game back in 2002. Overall, having discussed this game and some of its amazing changes, I do feel we need to wrap this up. It has been going a bit long, we're sitting here at 13 minutes now, so let's keep going. Firstly, I do recommend this game. Yeah, even though it's a remake of an old game, there's some new scenes and some new additional stuff in it that like you've been just yammering on about for the past 13 minutes, so yes, I do recommend it to old and new fans alike. It does breathe new life into some old bones. Secondly, even though its ties to the successors are slim, it's a really compelling story. I've played many games in the past two years and I can say that right now I can count on one hand the amount of games where the story went above and beyond. That includes Mafia 3, which I'm currently playing right now. A good story can elevate any game. Let me just rattle off some scores. Performance was an 8, story was a 10, gameplay was an 8, overall 8.6. Why was the story not going to be a 10? The gameplay is an 8 because, let's be honest here, it's everything else from every other previous Mafia. It was good when it was in other Mafias, but now this Mafia has just kind of been homogenised into the rest of them. It's good gameplay, but there's nothing new there. The performance is an 8 because... The performance is an 8 because even though it managed to keep good frame rates and such, it still had those little issues at the beginning that I cannot justify. Like, I don't know how they happened, I don't know what came about, but I spent half an hour just trying to get a game to work. I spent half an hour trying to get a game to load. <laughs> but once it worked, in the words of Todd Howard, just worked. None of any issues after that, it worked perfectly fine, but the fact of the matter is, I had some failure to launch issues. You can't really solve that. So here are my final thoughts. It took me about 10 hours to complete this game. I have deducted some time due to the failure of launch and stuff, and also rerunning certain missions for the benchmark you saw earlier. The game did run better than its predecessors, but that should be given. I did have to run it at 60 FPS so while streaming. Due to my setup, it cannot handle anything more. I'm streaming the game through my Ethernet to another computer to stream it, so if I do anything more than that while stressing both CPUs, it gets really laggy. Really only had this issue with Mafia 3 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare though, but Twitch can't let you view it in over 60 FPS, so you might as well just lock it. Though this game is stripped back to allow for an arrow or scope, the gameplay is still solid, but my biggest gripe comes from the grind. I feel I spent more time driving to and from places and actually playing taxi than playing mobster. For all the things they added, they could have removed some more of the driving. They removed some driving from the second mission, but not by much. I also did neglect to bring up that one racing mission. On medium difficulty, that was far too easy. I've been told in the highest difficulty, it's damn near impossible, like it used to be. But I did want to get this review out in a timely manner, and I really did want to see some of the changes. When Hangar 13 went into this, they must have had one goal in mind, make Tommy more likeable, and that was a success. The new voice acting and animations as well as all the added stuff do just make Tommy a better lead. You do end up feeling sorry for him, but you're also happy. Every character's gonna have this treatment, but none more than Tommy, and this by far, this is the definitive edition. Anyway troops, that wraps it up for me. Usual pish I'm not gonna tell you to do, but if you do hang around to the end, there is a little blooper. Um, there was something I wanted to say, and I bust out laughing when saying it, and just couldn't say it. But that's really it. I'll catch you in a bit, Shaggles. Now, given all the talk of becoming the first Princess Diana, Tommy panics. <laughs> I can't say that.